everyone, Arlen here. Welcome back to my Country Craft Corner. How in the world are you guys doing today? It is so good to see you again and thank you so, so much for stopping back by to see what I'm up to. Now this video is gonna be a little bit of a hodgepodge, so keep up with me here, okay, as we go through this. Uh, for those of you who watched my video yesterday, uh, which is the day that we switched the rugs out and we put the gray rugs over here on this side of the house instead of, and we replaced the ones in the living room and dining room in the foyer with those really pretty cream and kind of steely slate blue rugs. Well, I had already finished my centerpiece for the kitchen table. And if you remember, I got that tablecloth right there. You can see it. And there's the gray rug under it. And here's a quick look at the centerpiece, which I was not happy with. I wasn't happy with the, the tablecloth, and I wasn't happy with how the centerpiece, the centerpiece matches beautifully with that tablecloth, <laughs> but it doesn't match beautifully with my new tablecloth that I went out and purchased this morning from Home Goods. It cost me $24, $25. And so, hang with me here. I'm gonna morph over into the footage from my uh, lantern centerpiece the other day because I want you to see how I pulled it together up into a certain point. And then I'm gonna come back here and show you how I'm gonna switch a few things out and change the look and feel of the centerpiece to match this tablecloth. So I think this is also a good one to show you that with just a few tweaks, you can make something match whatever you want. You can tweak it, you can change it, you can re redo it to conform to what you want it to be, <laughs> which is what I'm having to do with this. So I'll be back for uh, to show you how I'm gonna tweak it and for my final words that I'm gonna keep the same from now on uh, as I always have. So. Here we go. I'm going to morph into my footage from the other day and to show you how I put the lantern together to explain my lantern centerpiece and all of that. I'm just going to morph right into where I start making the lantern since I already said hello to you and all that stuff. <laughs> so I'll morph right into that and take it to a certain point and then I'm going to morph back here and we're going to finish up this lantern centerpiece and put this tablecloth on the table and hopefully pull it all together. Fingers crossed, you guys. All right, I'll be right back when I'm ready to tweak this lantern centerpiece. As you can see, these are the four ribbons that I'm going to be using. I'm pulling in a little bit of black into this centerpiece just because I wanted a little bit of, of contrast, if you will, with the burgundy. And I still am pulling in the burlap. And I'm, these have got butterflies on them. This has, I've had this ribbon for a very, very, very long time. And it's got butterflies on it. Look at that. So we're going to use this. For something different so let's get started here First i've thing. got four strips of each type of ribbon cut at 24 inches long each strip of ribbon equals one loop in your 16 loop bow so i've got 16 loops and it's just a matter of arranging them within in my hands to make up a bow I'm not up high enough hang on so let's pick up the very first strip, fold it completely in half. Find, I'm gonna do five and a half inches as I've done throughout this series, five and a half inch loop, find that on your measuring device, pinch it together at that point, go to that back tail and twist it around. Because even if your ribbon looks like it's two-sided, it really is usually just one-sided. There is a back and a front to most ribbons, even if it's just as a matter of a hem. So I always 
turn that back ribbon toward the front to get all of the tails moving in the same direction, at least at the very start. Okay, we're gonna go all, pick up the second strip in our pattern here. And again, fold it right in half, go to five and a half inches, pinch it together and add it in right beside your first loop. And try to add them in sideways and don't pile them on top of one another. It makes for a jumbled mess if you do that. So again, go to that back tail and twist it. And we're gonna to go to the third ribbon in our pattern. Go to five and a half inches, pinch it together, pointing that loop up from center. Center being my thumb. Picture my thumb as being the center of the bow. So these, for the first time through this pattern, let's pick up this next one. We're gonna be going i got to kind of watch my butterflies here. I'm going to turn that over so I can get them kind of going in the same direction. And again, you want to go and twist that tail. So there we go. We have our first four ribbons in the pattern, all with the loops pointing up from center, the center of the bow, which is my thumb. I'm letting this ribbon kind of slide back to the crook of my forefinger and my thumb and I'll just add them in. As I add them in, it'll slide further and further back. Okay, so the second time through the pattern, I'm going to turn the loop. We start the pattern over again, and I'm going to turn the loop and point it down from center, center being my thumb. Okay, and there we go. Again, going to that back tail and twisting. So all the way through this pattern, this time, we're gonna point that loop down from center like that. I'll go ahead through this pattern and then I'll explain the next the next switch out or whatever you want to call it. Or I'll explain the next time we go start through the ribbon and then I'll speed through the rest so that I'm not having y'all sit here for hours on end again. Okay, there we go. Down from center, twist that tail. And The last ribbon in the pattern, point it down. And that's kind of got those butterflies going the way I want them to go. Pinch it together and twist, okay? So there we have eight of our 16 ribbons right there. Now I'm gonna go through the pattern twice more and I'm gonna be, the first time through, I'm gonna be pointing the loops up from center and then the second time through, I'm gonna be pointing the loops down from center. And when I am finished adding all the loops in, I'll be back and we'll do some fluffing on this bow. <laughs> all righty, be right back. Okie dokie, there we go. Got all the way through the pattern four times. <laughs> Woohoo! We have got a handful of ribbon. My, my left hand is cramping. So I'm going to go ahead and pick up my pipe cleaner, go about to the center of my pipe cleaner, lay it beside your thumb, lift your thumb, pull it around, the bottom around the bottom and the top around the top. And you're going to squeeze that ribbon as, as tightly as you can. Squeeze it as tight as you can and get this the hand, the fingers on this hand up as close as you can to the bow. And I'm gonna twist the bow and I twist the pipe cleaner. I twist both and I twist them many times so that I don't, it doesn't come undone. The last thing you wanna do is have this thing come undone. So there we go. Now, the next thing we do and the most important part of making any bow is, is the fluffing. So let's take a little bit of time. I'm not gonna to take too much time to do a lot of fluffing here because I'll fluff mo most of it once it gets up on the lantern. But I do wanna take some time to do some initial fluff. All I need to do is tie this. I put a lot, I have uh, one long piece of the burgundy check here and I just turn it right side down and just snug it right into the back of the bow. Now I'm gonna set this bow aside for a minute while we do, while we work with the lantern. So 
just gonna set this bow over here, but that's what I use to tie this bow onto the lantern. So let me just set this bow aside here for a minute and let it hang out there for a little bit while we work on our lantern part. To my knowledge, I am the first person who introduced the lantern centerpiece, the way I do it, onto YouTube. So I do, you all fuss at me for not taking credit for things. So I do take credit for this. I take credit for this and I take credit for my cozy corners. Uh, I started making lantern centerpieces years and years ago so that I could have an easy way to make a really nice substantial centerpiece for my kitchen table, but be able to move it. When I had a lot of people come over and we're gonna sit down and we're gonna be talking across the table or eating, you know, I wanted to be able to move it off of the table easily, hence the tray. So let's talk about the tray for a second. This tray, I got this tray from Hobby Lobby several years ago. I have not seen it at Hobby Lobby lately. So, but every other week their trays go on half price. And this was, I think it was a $50 tray or at least a $40 tray, and I, but I paid half price for it. But I've used it over and over and over again. I can't even tell you how many times for probably four years now for every season, except for this past Christmas. That's the first time I hadn't used it because Chris bought me those uh, red lanterns and I wanted to do something different with that. Regardless, start out with your tray. And I always try to get, this is just a placemat, an old placemat that I've had for years. And I like to set this down in the tray. For one thing, it protects the mirror, since this is a mirror tray. And for another thing, it helps the lantern not to slip and slide around within the tray. So that's why I put a little placemat down in the tray first. I normally do that, especially with my big lanterns. Speaking of my big lanterns, I got this one here in town at Dottie's Den. Years ago, uh, I cannot find this lantern online, unfortunately. There are other places that you can go and find a big lantern like this. This stands 20 inches tall by 10 inches by 10 inches by 10 inches by 10 inches. And the tray is 13 and a half inches wide and 20 and a half inches long. Uh, but you could go to Kirkland's and look, look on Amazon. They have lovely lanterns uh, that you could find. This is an oil rub bronze. I love oil rub bronze because all of our lighting fixtures are oil rub bronze as long with, along with our door handles and our uh, spigots at the sink here in the kitchen. And I love oil rub bronze. I think it's a nice classy color. So the very first thing I wanna do is to decorate the inside of the lantern, which I don't do too much of in my centerpieces. All that I'm going to do is take a couple of old Pipberry rings. I did not, I did purchase this. I usually make them out of Pipberry garlands, but I did purchase, this is ancient. This thing probably is 20 years old. And I'm just layering it with another one just to bring in all of the colors that I'm looking for, black and burgundy, and to bring in some stars. Not that anybody is gonna be able to see this inside this lantern, but I'll know it's there. And then I use a nine inch Luminara candle. Yes, this is a Luminara candle. And this is another thing that I use over and over and over again. You can set this on a timer for it to come on just for six hours in the evening. It also comes with a remote control that you can turn on. You can see the, the flame, oh my goodness, sorry about the lighting. The flame definitely does move itself. So this is all I'm going to put inside this lantern. If it was a shorter, candle, if it was a, a seven inch candle, I'd want it up on a candle uh, holder to lift the flame up a little bit, but this nine inch is just perfect to go inside this lantern. And I do take some time to fluff out the, the pit berries and I try to make sure that it's all centered in the lantern. And that's it. That's all I'm gonna do this time around for this lantern. And shut the door. 
And then I'm gonna go ahead and put the lantern up on the tray. And I'm gonna make sure that it's centered on the tray. That's important. I think I've said this a thousand times. I made it one time, made this up one time, and I did not have it centered on the tray and the whole, <laughs> The whole uh, centerpiece looked cattywomp. It was a mess. So let's see. That's got it side to side. And got it back. Look at that. Yay. Okay. Now let's build some decor around the bottom of this lantern. Let me see if I. Here we go. Okay. First thing I usually do is I use a, a Pipberry Garland. I got my Pipberry Garland from thepipberrybarn.com. This is just a plain berry garland. This is not a mixed berry garland. Of the garlands they sell, this is the cheaper version. So all I do is simply, and I'll give you a link in the description for the Pipberry Barn. You simply, I just put it right around the lantern. I don't tie it in, I don't, I just lay it in here. This does not have to be a hard project at all. And then I just kind of fluff it and get all the, you know, the pip berries to wake up and stand up straight and make a big statement, you know? That looks fine just like that, doesn't it? But I think I need a little something, something more. So I did pull out just some florals that I've had around the house for a long, long time. And I'm going to cut two of these in half. Let's do it right about there. I don't want it to be covered in flowers. I'm going to put the two biggers, bigger ones on the edges, on the sides, and put the smaller ones on the front and the back. Back a little bit so you guys can see what I'm doing in front of the lantern too. So again, I'm just going to follow this right around and I'm going to put this in the back and follow it right on around as if they were all going the same direction. So that these are opposite, like the front of this is going this way and the front of this is going this way and the same for the front. So just to add a little of interest, I'm gonna to have to remove this scarf, you guys. Just give me a second. Whew. Crazy with the, oh, look, wait a minute, first of all, I wanna do something that I do with all of my lantern centerpieces. I don't know where I came up with this, but these are those spheres that you can find in a Hobby Lobby. And these are just kind of burlap be colored spheres. And I'm going to put one in each corner to quote unquote anchor my corners. Just to, I, I don't know why I do it. It just makes me happy. It makes my eyes happy to fill in the corners. And I'm arranging them so that you can see the birds. And I kind of, you know, Wrapping the pip berries around them a little bit. All right. Now, I think I'm going to need two, four, six, eight roses. Let's see if I have eight roses. I'm simply, I don't, going to put one there. Again, I don't want this to be super duper loud. I just want it to be, have a touch of the burgundy color. The only thing I can see that I might like, but this is all of the roses I have, and I didn't know whether I would want any in the, top of the, in the bow too, but one right there would be pretty, and in the back. And we're gonna start working on the bow. I wish, they used to, at Hobby Lobby, they used to sell black butterflies. 
and I can't find them anymore. They don't sell them anymore. But if I had some, I'd put some black butterflies in here. That would be really pretty, but I don't have any. So at least I don't think I do. I might go out and look at my garage later and see if I do. But anyway, this will be pretty just like this. Regardless, I now want to add my bow. And as I said, I'm just doing a bow topper. I'm not doing a swag on this. I just want to do a funky bow topper. So, go ahead and, all right. So we're just gonna tie this on and I'm only doing one, you know, the bow on one side of this. I'm not doing a double funky bow. Left over right, left strip over the right strip. And then you're gonna pull this as tight as you can get it. You wanna pull that bow up as close as you can get it to the lantern. Really tight. And then you're gonna make a loop with the left. And you're gonna come over it with the right and take the loop right through and pull it. And there you go. You have a little pretty little bow that you can untie this funky bow topper with whenever you want. And yeah, I did keep this loop down here because I actually like this or this, not this loop, this handle, because I actually like the handle to stand up sometimes. This time I want the handle to kind of stand up. And the hand just walked in and waved at me there. <laughs> and now I'm just gonna let this hang to about the edge of the lantern. And I wanna do some fluffing. So let me do that in fast motion. I'll be right back and we're gonna do a little something, something to this bow. I did have stars. Let me put, pull this back. I forgot all about the stars. So I thought I would put maybe one in the front. So that left me with one star. And I thought I may just kind of glue it right in, into the center of the bow. Actually, I actually think I would rather have one without a handle on it. Something like that. But I'm not sure on that. So let me let that sit and I'll think about that a little bit. Also, I have just pit berries that match the pit berry garland very, very closely that I worked with down there. And I really do not want to do a lot a ton with this bow, but let me see here. Start with, I've got my hot glue gun back here, and I'll give you a link for all of my tools too, except that I need some glue. That would help. <laughs> I got this like I don't even know how many years ago I believe at Cracker Barrel one year but this is very very actually no I'm fibbing I got this over at uh, the Country Treasures store over in Harrisonburg Virginia and you know what this will be the background but I'm gonna put this just like a, as a little tree right in the top like that I think Just kind of as its crowning glory there. I love that. Got 
little stars in it. And like I said, this is the only one I have that I know of and it's super pretty and I wanna use it. So there we go. And other than that, I have roses, of course, a couple of roses left. I could put one here or there, but behind. I don't want to put it on top of the, on top of anything to hide the bow. I want the bow, well, oh, right there might be pretty. I want the bow to do the talking, you know? Just like that. You want to be able to see the bow. That's what I think is important about, about these toppers is let's not go so crazy that we, we hide what we work so hard to create, you know? I think I'm gonna call this done. All right, I'm gonna uh, get these roses glued in and then I'll be back for some final words, you guys. Okay, now, as you saw, I got to a certain point. Hang on here. I need to get my hot glue gun out. I'm gonna morph away just for one more second and get my hot glue gun out because I need to do that. So hang on just a sec. I did this to myself, you guys. I did this whole thing to myself because it was my bright idea to change the rug, to put the gray rugs over on this side of the house, which I really, really, really wanted to do and was so glad that Chris said that that would be fine with him and when it matched the family room so well i was just thrilled you know so it's just this table that was kind of tweaking at me a little bit going no it doesn't match no i really can't deal with that tablecloth as pretty as it is and as country as it is and as everything as it is it wasn't what i need for that table so i did want to tell you too i also bought a, a set of placemats and I'll probably replace just my placemats out on the tables and take the, you know, this burgundy check off of the tables. It's just a little too much of it. A touch of it here and there is good, and I'm gonna leave the rest of it, but I think I'm gonna replace the, uh, you know, the placemats on the tables to these, so. Okay, as you can see, I had used these uh, spheres to anchor the corners. Well, this is not the right color. This color just really did not make me happy to go along with this. So instead, I had remembered I had purchased these a while back, and I did not purchase these today, but you can see how much better that works. So I'm gonna replace all four corners with my little Flor de Lis spheres. You can see, I already did it to here. You can see that I added just a little bit of cream in. And I just had this top, I had it in my garage, and I'm just cutting a little bit off of it as I go here. And I'm just gonna add it to each, to each side. So let me go ahead and turn it around here. And I'm just gonna add it right in on top. I'm not taking the, you know, the khaki color out but I'm just kind of adding this and, you know, just kind of mixing it in a little bit, just to pull a bit of the cream color in and down into the lantern. And I'm also gonna let, uh, add some to the top too. So into the bow. So easily tweaked and it makes me feel a lot better. I don't feel bad about the khaki color being in there. I like it in there. And I'm really gonna like it with this, with this tablecloth. But I just needed to bring some more, a lighter color, lighter color element in, you know? Not to cover up the khaki color, just to blend in with it, you know? I'm not gonna worry about the edges. I think that'll be fine. Now let me lift my camera and we're gonna put some up into this bow too. You know, I have some cream stars. So I just need a touch just to bring that feeling up into the bow too. Let me cut one more piece of this. And these actually kind of pull off 
just like that in one one little piece so I'm just gonna you know stick a piece here and there and actually I might leave a few I need to pull it this way you guys just a touch you know and I'm just gonna take my glue gun around and glue these in I'll be back for some final words after I get this spiffed up with some cream flowers all right be back hey everyone I'm back and I'm finished and I am let's all say it together super happy with how it worked out in the end oh my goodness y'all I had a a sleepless night sleep last night I honest to goodness did that tablecloth was driving me crazy I knew I was gonna need to tweak the centerpiece and uh, wait till you see it with the rug it looks really pretty now I am so relieved that I was able to tweak it enough to get a new tablecloth for not an arm and a leg and any other appendage you know I was really happy about that because this table was 120 inches long so it's not easy to find cheap you know tablecloths and thank you home goods for having something that is going to pair beautifully with the gray and the khaki and the cream and the rug so anyway I'm gonna get my camera down and I'm gonna uh, take some close-up shots Everything and looks. you can oh. see I added my birds and I even added some cream into the the candle rings the pit berry candle rings those pit berry candle rings were the ones that uh, Kim got me so I added some of the same green cream tufts that I put in the lantern into those two just to kind of pull it out and to pull it all together so you know I told Chris he walked into the kitchen and I said Remember that lady that says I don't craft, <laughs> that all I do is bows? You know, this is crafting, if you ask me. I mean, I had a totally different look with this table when we started out this video. You know, uh, the lantern that you guys saw me put together in the morphed, you know, in the footage from the other day was totally different than what this looks like now. So please never get discouraged. Yeah, you may have a sleepless night like I did, but never get discouraged. Keep thinking, keep tweaking in your mind. Keep tweaking, you know, get your hands on things. And you can do it. You can pull anything together. And think about what's around, like I was thinking about what was around this lantern. What, what was I gonna need to bring in? And this tablecloth is not a gray. It is more of a grage. G-R-E-I-G-E. -E. It is not It is not a true gray, but I don't want a true gray. I want to be able to pull out the creams. I want to be able to pull out the khakis. I want to be able to pull out the grays if, you know, if need be. I want those choices. I want to be, able, I, you know, the burgundy with this looks beautiful. The burgundy paired with all of this, it's just a pop of that burgundy and I love it, you guys. Anyway, I'm rambling and I'm sure this video is long enough as it is. So let me say my final words here and uh, say that I hope that those of you who are struggling and suffering with a catastrophic illness or chronic pain, I hope that you have someone there with you, spending their days with you, taking care of you, helping you get through each and every day, making the very, very best out of each and every day. I hope there's nothing weighing on your minds or your hearts, pulling your attention away from where you want it to be or where it should be. I love you all to bits, to bits, to bits, hugs all around. And I keep you in my thoughts and my prayers every single day. And remember, in crafting, there are no mistakes, only unique creations. And this video is the epitome of that quote. You know? So anyway, with all of that said, I'll just say, until next time, y'all take good, good care. Bye-bye.